In this section, I will be going over the various acupuncture points that we use to clear an allergy. The first step is to locate the substance that we are going to be clearing onto the box. Note that any other samples should be located there as well, such as any food items or pet hair. Just instruct the patient or client to put the contents into a bag beforehand. The second step is to measure the finger width of the patient or client's hands to yours or mine because we're going to measure several, several points in the body using this finger width, not yours or mine. I'll explain a little bit more when I show you the measuring process. The third step is to do the allergy symptom removal process. The first point that I'll show you is GV20, located at the top of the head. And the easiest way to find this point is by drawing a line up from the middle of the ear over to the center of the head. On a serious note here, the angle of the laser must be angled towards the face at a 45 degree angle. This will serve to sedate the patient or calm him down or her down. Depressing the on off switch on the laser and waiting until the timer goes off. The next two points are at LI20 on both sides of the nose and then on GV26 or right at the dividing line of the nose and the midpoint between the tip of the nose and the upper lip. Following that, there is CV24, which is located centrally, where the line of the chin is formed. When, what I'm going to cover is the patient or client's right side of the body. The exact same procedure is to be done over on the patient or client's left side of the body. So, we are on KI27, and these two points located three fingers from the body's central line just under the clavicle we're going on sp21 now or on the sixth space on the side of the rib li11 is located centrally to where the following two points are determined one when the arm is flexed the point just beside or on the outside of the main bone. The point is also located on in the bendable part of the arm, then looking at where the most heavily pronounced crease is, and finally followed the crease to its end. Two, if you tell the patient or client uh, to tighten up his arm again, it is the side of the tricep muscle that we are after. Once these two points are determined, it can then be used to find the exact location. There is another way of doing this, and that is the, if the patient's arm is totally flexed, it is the deepest crease that we want to use and traverse the crease until its end. That is where LI11 resides. LU5 can be found as the arms are flexed and separated by about a 22 uh, degree angle. You can check the elbow crease and locate the big bone. You're going to use the point just outside of it. LI4, we can start by measuring the length of your patient or client's thumb to that of your own. Using this length in mind, we determine the placement of laser by bending your thumb and placing onto the patient's open index finger and thumb. It is as close to the bone as, that connects up the index finger with the rest of the hand. Special point TW1 at the base of the ring fingers. Inside a quarter of a centimeter of the nail, SB10 is located when the patient's knees are flexed, three finger widths on the inside of the leg 
and measuring begins where the top of the knee ends. SP9 can be found by traversing the main bone on the inside of the leg below the knee. When it starts to bend is where the point is located. Just be sure to locate the point slightly outside to where the bone sits. SD36. We can begin by locating at the bottom of the knee, four finger widths apart on the outside of the main bone that runs down the center of the leg. SP6. We can start by measuring from the center of the foot bone that juts out four finger widths apart in a line that goes upward from the foot and on the insides of the leg. LR3 is located on the dorsum of the foot, underneath the foot, between the big toe and the second toe. If you feel the, the way in between these two toes all the way down, it will end up by the meeting of the two bones. This is where LR3 resides. SP1 can be found on the outside of the big toe inside a quarter of a centimeter of the nail on the base of the nail. SD45 we can begin by locating the outside of the nail on the second toe then making it inside a quarter of a centimeter of the nail on the base of the nail. BL67 we can start by locating the outside of the nail on the little toe then making, making it inside a quarter of a centimeter of the nail on the base of the nail. K1, KI1 is located with the patient showing the underneath of the foot and measuring one third the distance from the top of the foot, not including toes to the bottom of the foot. It is also in the middle of the foot where we want this point to be at. 